What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. Back with another reaction video, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird Lifetime Achievement Award. This one was recommended to us by Gwumpy Old Man. Appreciate you, my brother, for the excellent recommendation. Also want to give a big shout out to Dana Carter, who left a comment about Larry Bird and then capped off her comment by saying, to me, stay safe, stay well. Thank you. That was so kind of you. And back to you. Stay safe, stay well, wherever you are out there in the world, as well as everybody else. I don't know what to expect from this video at all. I didn't even know this kind of award was a thing. Well, I, uh, I guess now that I knew, I knew they gave out awards, but I forgot now they do this whole big ceremony thing for the NBA awards. I completely forgot about that. So, yeah, let's check it out. The presenter of the NBA Lifetime Achievement Award has had some great achievements in his own career. His films have made over $5 billion, making him the highest grossing film actor of all time. He has appeared in more than 184 films and TV production in his career. And he has 100 more coming out next week. From Spider-Man Far From Home, give it up for Samuel L. Jackson. Nick Hill. It's a Jackson. <laughs> I expect a great white shark to just pop out the floor and take him down. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There is one unassailable fact in sports. Every generation thinks their heroes are the best the game has ever seen. The truth of the matter is, the game has changed so much through the years, it's always been hard to measure one set of heroes against another. But we're in the age of information now, and the younger generation can see with their own eyes what us old guys are talking about when we say, Ain't nothing like Larry Legend and Magic Johnson. Google their eight NBA championships in nine years, or their six MVPs in seven. YouTube their jaw-dropping highlights, although apologies in advance for the short shorts and long ass socks. <laughs> Stream the documentaries about how their parallel excellence fueled a rivalry that became an undying friendship. You can even like the Broadway play based on their beautifully complex relationship. It's all out there at your fingertips. But with all due respect to social media, you can't tell their sublime saga in 280 characters. No. I see a, a lot of young players out there who were born after Magic and Larry retired, and it's hard to explain how before these two, basketball was a sport. After, it was a religion. Mm. Yes, the game has definitely changed. Mm. There's no denying that. But let's be damn sure we never forget that these two are the guys who changed it. Bird versus Magic. Magic versus Bird. It was so intense. Along comes Magic, along comes Bird. They immediately had this tremendous competition. Larry and Magic dominated the 80s. They carried the NBA with honor. It helped elevate the NBA to another level. Everybody just get ready, sit back, and uh, let's enjoy it. Highlights <laughs> oh, oh, what a show! Man, Magic Johnson played with a mission. Larry Bird, one more impossible shot after the other. A lot of guys can just score. A lot of guys can just rebound. A lot of guys can just make plays. We can do it Love all. Love that pass. The way we Love that pass. The game of basketball was exactly the same. That's why we hated each other. Now that's a field by Bird. There it is. We would do anything to win. Johnson over Parrish. He hits it. It's over. And the most valuable player is Magic Johnson. The Boston Celtics are the NBA world. I, I love that Larry moment, whipping the towel. Once you're considered the best, you want to stay there. Larry Bird! It's the buzzer! Three-pointer! Yes! Oh, my! You just can't orchestrate it better than that. I remembered all of these good times. Magic and Larry had a come-together moment where they realized how important they were to each other. Magic's just a great basketball player. There will never, ever be another Larry Bird. Magic and Bird. The greatest rivalry in sports history. That's Paul Pierce. Ladies and gentlemen, 
your 2019 Lifetime Achievement Award recipients, Larry Bird and Captain Black, Irvin Magic Johnson. There's a lot of people there. He's all right. I'll go first. Get back there and be quiet. <laughs> Hold this for me. Okay. I'm busy. <laughs> Larry, damn. Lifetime fool. Achievement Award. That means you've been around a long time. In Magic's case, probably a little too long. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I see all these highlights. Haven't seen a lot of them for a long time. But, you know, I played for the Boston Celtics, if you didn't know that, and very proud, too. Um, played with a lot of great teammates. Even played with some Hall of Famers, Dave Cowens, Pete Maravich, my favorite Bill Walton, Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, and Dennis Johnson. Salute, Bill. And Kevin Pritchard. Well, I had to get that in there because he's my boss now. So, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, a few right after I got done playing for the Celtics, Donnie Walsh and Herb Simon called me to see if I had any interest in coaching the Indiana Pacers. Right away I said no. The next call, no. Next time I met with him, no. So I called my friend Rick Carlisle. So you ain't going to believe this. They're trying to get me coach the Indiana Pacers. He goes, don't do it. Stay away from it. Find some other hobby to do. I go, okay, I'll never do that. Well, guess what? I did it. Called Rick up and said, you ready to go be assistant with me? He looked at me and said, I can't believe you're doing this. I said, hey, if it turns out bad, at least we can hang around with Reggie Miller for three years. So uh, we did it. We had some success. And uh, the only reason we had success, I believe, is just because they were great players. They played together. They cared. You had Reggie, Mark, Dale, Rick, mm -hmm. Jalen, Chris Mullen, Sam Perkins, Austin Crozier, mm -hmm. just a wonderful group of guys. And even one year we got to the finals, they ran into Shaq and Colby, which was, you know, a little tough at the time, especially when they were young. Then I had an opportunity to go in the front office for a number of years and absolutely enjoyed it, being back at home in Indiana. You know, the one thing that I see happens often is you see these old broken down NBA players talking about their area and how great they were back then. And the players today are not as good as they were back then. That's crazy, man. I mean, obviously, you haven't seen LeBron James the last 17, 18 years. You didn't see Clay Thompson score 37 points in one quarter. Or you didn't see Clay Thompson, like I did, score 30, uh, 60 points in 32 minutes. Or obviously, you don't see James Harden come down the lane getting ready to dunk on whoever's standing there. I mean, it's just amazing how these guys are playing the game today. And I couldn't be more prouder of them. The game's in a good place. And what I tell all these young players coming in today is keep the game the way you found it, and it can go on for generations to come. Thank you. Giannis Siakam. First of all, God is so good. But listen, man, retirement is great for you because you've never talked this long. <laughs> So I want to thank Dr. Jerry Buss, the late great Dr. Jerry Buss, for drafting me back way back in the day. Um, his beautiful daughter now running the Lakers, Jeannie. But let me just also thank Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He was on this stage earlier, made my life so easy. One of my other former players uh, that I played with, Jamal Wilkes, is here as well, Hall of Famer. Vladi, I see you over there. Thank you, rookie season. I got Larry, I got to tell you a quick story about Jamal. It was my rookie season, and uh, I threw a pass down the lane, and Jamal wasn't looking, and uh, it went out of bounds, and the coach said, damn it, rookie, you can't make that pass. So I said, okay, so next time, Doc, 
we came down again, the same play. Jamal wasn't looking, so I hit him right in the head. <laughs> so I told Jamal, don't make me look bad when I throw a pass like that. So Jamal will remember that play. But anyway, I want to thank Laker organization. I want to thank all my teammates, also the greatest coach has ever lived, Pat Riley, for being such a great coach and allow me to play up and down basketball. I want to thank my beautiful wife, Cookie. And, and last but not least, man. Yeah, Cookie, listen, a real one. I think we pushed each other to greatness. Mm. And every day I watch your box score and I said, man, he had a high triple double. I always wanted to just be just where you were. So thank you for pushing me and I hope I did the same for you. God bless you. Thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Thanks, Sam. Lifetime Achievement Award. So it was literally just that. I don't know what I was thinking. Lifetime Achievement Award. Well deserved. So I wonder, let me know in the comment section, is this Lifetime Achievement Award, do they give out a new award to somebody new each year? Like who will be the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award this year, next year? Let me know, or just like a one-off thing where, all right, we doing this for Magic, we doing this for Bird because of what they meant to the game, what they did for the game, what they did for the future of the game, what they did for the NBA as a whole, which was a dying, a dying product. And like he said, it was a sport, but after these guys got through with it, it became a religion when they got a hold of it. So, uh, well-deserved, well-deserved. No question about it. And I think it's good to do this now and give these players their flowers while they are still alive. I think way too often people get their flowers after it's all said and done and then they want to get remembered and recognized and then they're not able to physically receive their award while they're still on this earth. So I, I think that's, I think they need to stop, start doing that more and also start getting some of these players into the Hall of Fame sooner because some players, it's, it's, it's unbelievable how long they have to wait before they get inducted into the Hall of Fame. And, you know, you never know. Tomorrow's never promised. But when you can get them while they're younger, it's, I think it's best to do that. Because life doesn't get any harder with age as uh, attrition and health starts to become more of a concern. So happy to see them get their flowers now. And, and well-deserved. Larry and Magic are truly one of a kind. I love their competitive fervor and also, also their ultimate respect for each other as competitors and as friends and brothers without a question they will forever be linked as long as this world keeps spinning those two will forever be intertwined in their history rightfully so if you want to hear check out more content like this go check out our larry bird playlist go check out our magic johnson playlist we have more videos telling the stories of these two players and me just soaking it all up and learning as much as i can appreciate you guys if you have any context to add to this please let me know in the comment section appreciate the rec recommendation again wumpy old man and y'all take care be safe out there catch you on the next one we out baby 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 baby